Welcome to the second of our tutorial videos. And as promised in the previous video, we will now, first of all, look at the Samsung J5 and show how to overcome a focusing problem which may be affecting your phone. Let's set the minimum focusing distance. As we are struggling to get the camera to focus, let's place the fly the same distance from the phone as previously with the iPhone 8 and place the background an equal distance from the fly. As soon as we start to zoom in, the detail drops away rapidly and the image becomes blurry. Also, the camera won't focus at this distance. Let's zoom all the way out and try taking an image to see what results we get. We'll set the timer for 5 seconds. And as there is no square screen mode, set the focus lock. In this case, the focus lock area is represented by a circle. And take the image. Let's have a look. Not very nice, the image is very blurry. But notice how the background is quite sharp, even though we lock the focus onto the fly. As we know the background is in focus, let's move the fly so that it's tight up against the background. This should put the fly within the depth of field. Although we are taking care to position the focus lock over the fly, which is always a good habit, we could probably focus anywhere on the background and get the same result as the focus point is somewhere other than within the focus lock area. Let's have a look at this image. And success, it looks like we have a usable image. Now let's have a look in more detail at the image taken from the phone. Here is the image and the same image cropped but not edited. For a phone of this spec, it's not bad, and I think it's the best image we are going to get from this phone. But let's see if we can improve it by moving closer. This image has of course been cropped, and we know from the previous video that moving closer produces a far better image than cropping, and we also know that zooming with this phone is out of the question. Now that we've moved the fly up against the background, the distance of the fly is now 20 centimeters, or 8 inches from the phone. We also need to find the minimum focusing distance for this phone. We can't use the same method as in the previous video, with the iPhone, because the phone won't focus on the fly. But we do know it will focus on the background, so we'll move them both together to find the distance. As we move the fly and background toward the lens, you can see the camera refocusing. The minimum focusing distance was a very respectable 7 and a half centimeters or 3 inches. At this distance, we noticed, when tapping the screen to position the focus point, the focus became sharp, but when setting the focus lock the fly became blurry, so maybe, the fault is with the focus lock. We used the focus lock for the previous photograph, so it's most likely an intermittent problem. We saw the phone's autofocus working, when we were finding the minimum focusing distance, so let's take an image, allowing the phone to do the focusing instead of manually locking it ourselves, and see what result we get. As the phone focuses on the fly, it also sets the exposure, but it is far too bright. And, when we try to set the exposure with the ring light, the phone readjusts, putting the fly out of focus. But now, as the focus lock isn't set, we can now adjust the exposure on the screen, let's try that. It's not bad, but the background isn't a very nice color. 
Then as the phone reset, we noticed that the fly was still quite sharp, so quickly took an image. Although it's a bit dark, the background is more in keeping with the actual color of the background. So we repeated the steps, to see if we could replicate the photo, to get a consistent way of taking an image with this phone. We tapped on the area we wanted in focus, and dragged a finger down over the fly, to adjust the exposure, and then we waited. And waited. And waited. It seemed to take forever for the phone to reset, but eventually it did. And then we took another image, and got this result. The images were identical, so, at last we've found a way of getting consistent results. Okay, the images are a bit dark, but this can be fixed in editing, which we'll look at in another video. We now know, for this phone to take consistent close-up images, we need to place the fly against the background, at a distance, no closer than 3 inches. And, we need to allow the phone to reset, after choosing an area of focus, and setting the exposure. We will, of course, need to crop these images, so let's look at zooming, versus cropping for this phone. We know from the previous video, that in the test with the iPhone, zooming was better. Let's see if it's still true for this phone. As you have seen, problems with focusing can be overcome, with a bit of trial and error, deduction and by paying attention, not only to the focus of the fly, but also the background. We were able to determine, the focus lock wasn't working correctly, and that at the distance we were working, the phone's autofocus, and exposure settings, were far better than using manual settings. At the beginning of this video, we tried the zoom on this phone, but we couldn't get the fly to focus. Maybe, now that we've found a way to take consistent images, the zoom will be better. As we did in the previous video, we'll zoom in, to get a composition we like, and take an image. Then we'll take another image at full distance, and crop, to the size of the zoomed image, and compare the two, to see which method produces the best image with this phone. Let's see if we get the same result as in the previous video. We can see from the slider on the screen. The phone has a 4x zoom, so as before, we'll use half the available capacity. We'll use the same method of focus, for both images, The focusing system on this phone is pitifully slow. And here are both images. Again, the image taken at distance, has been cropped to the same size as the zoomed version. And here are both, side by side. Although neither are very good images, we can see the cropped, is much better than the zoomed image. So in the case of this phone, the software isn't up to the job. Use this comparison on your own phone, you will soon see which method produces the better image. This is the end of part 2. We hope this short video has given you some ideas of how you can get around any focusing problems you are having with your phone, and that you can now take better images. Watch part 3. 4 ideas on composition, and how to get the best from your backgrounds.